Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to walk through how to export a machine learning model from Microsoft Fabric and import that into Azure Machine Learning so we can publish that as a real-time inference endpoint. And you might ask, why do we need to do that? Um, couldn't we just deploy that directly from Fabric? Um, and as of this recording, which is um, February in 2024, um, currently Fabric doesn't have the ability to deploy a model directly to an inference endpoint. That is on Microsoft's um, roadmap as of this recording uh, but currently if we want to deploy a model we develop in fabric um, it is as a reference inference on point uh, in, in, uh, in a, as a web service we have to put it somewhere else but that's very easy to do so let's walk through that and see how we actually accomplish it so the first step is to go into fabric obviously and I'm going to choose the workspace where I have a model deployed. So I have this one in Urban Wheelworks, which is a, a demo workspace that I use quite a bit. And I have this model called Customer Spend Model. It takes various inputs from uh, customer demographics and predicts their customer spend. The model's already been developed. It was developed against Fabric Data. Um, but now it's just a model, and we can really use it from anywhere. So we can see the input schema has an output schema and we're essentially going to redeploy this somewhere else. Since this was registered with MLflow, um, really all the metadata we need for the deployment is already here. So we'll just go ahead and download the uh, model version and that'll come into a, a zip file in my downloads folder. So if I open that, I can see all of the MLflow metadata along with the ML model itself. And these happen to be the same files that Azure ML needs in order to register a model in that service and from that service we can deploy it. So I'm going to copy this out of the zip file so that it's on my file system. And that looks good. And then I'm going to switch over to Azure ML and go into the machine learning studio for the workspace. So I have a recent workspace here that I'm, I'm just going to deploy it here, even though it's not related to this, so it'll, it'll be good for a demo. So let me go into that workspace and look at the models that I have and currently have three models registered in this workspace. So I'm just going to register this new one as well. And since I've downloaded it to my desktop, I'm just going to upload it from there. So I have to tell it it's an MLflow um, and I choose the folder. This is a little unintuitive because you're choosing a folder. It looks like you're choosing files, but you actually want to choose a folder. And when you click upload, you'll see the MLflow assets that are little to be uploaded. Then we need to give it a name. Uh, this will be the registered name of the model in Azure ML. So version one's fine. Um, all this stuff is fine. So I'll just click register. And what this will do is upload these uh, MLflow assets into Azure ML, register them within the workspace. And from here, I can continue on as if I had developed this model in Azure ML. It doesn't really matter. So we're going to deploy that as a real-time endpoint. Um, I'll just go with the default uh, compute. Uh, instant count one to save me a little bit of money and I'll create a new new endpoint name let me give it a name that means something more to me so I'll just name it after the model's name basically and so all looks fine deployment name okay so this is good so let's just go ahead and deploy that and then what's happening now is the compute is being created in the Azure infrastructure the model will be loaded into the uh, compute cluster, which will only have one node, so it's not really a cluster, but it's, it's a one node compute. And I'm gonna fast forward, uh, this takes you know 10 or 15 minutes to, to run, but I'll fast forward the video so we don't have to watch all that. So now that it's deployed, let's just give it a quick test so we can see this uh, metadata came right in from the MLflow registration. Um, we just, basically we're passing in a data frame, so we need to hard code values that it looks like, um, you know, a list of columns and then a, one column of values we run that and this is kind of garbage in garbage out but I can see that it actually did call the model and um, and it produced some output so I'm gonna copy this data and let's now call it from outside the um, the workspace so this is gonna be from my desktop I'm gonna use postman to call the endpoint uh, directly and it's gonna be a post I have this body in my clipboard right now so let me paste that in here before I lose it and we're just gonna send the same payload from outside of Azure and make sure it still works. The consume here, they give you, you know, essentially everything you need to put this into a, uh, the code for an application. And we can use the, the code, maybe JavaScript is easier to read. So here's the JavaScript version and we'll just 
copy and paste these values into Postman for our test. So the content type, we just pasted JSON in the body, so we have to tell it that that's JSON. And then next, do the authorization piece. And we just, we just need to pass in a bearer token using the API key, which was automatically generated when the endpoint was created. So let's paste that in here. And let's see what else are we missing. Okay, it looks fine. This is the content. Got the content type. We've got the security and the model name. So we need to, uh, the endpoint can have multiple models deployed to it. So we have to tell the, uh, the backend infrastructure which model we want to be called here. So we'll paste that in. And I think we've got everything now. So let's go ahead and send that. And lo and behold, we get the same values, I think, that we did before. Let's double check that. So grab that payload again. Let's paste it back into the test and just confirm that the test inside and outside the workspace creates some results it does. So that's pretty much it. Um, I hope that was um, useful and, uh, and I hope you learned something. I will see you next time.